Hey Tubies, we're back. On to our next evolutionary step of our classic car repair. Those purists may want to switch off from here onwards because you probably won't like what I'm going to do. In. So, any bad feedback, don't bother. Anyway, on to our next stage. This is going to be the next big step in my classic car repair. At the moment I've just had a belly full of welding and I really want to do something different as well now. My YouTube videos have fallen behind with the welding aspects of things but I'm sure they'll catch up. But basically I've worked my way down the second half of the car now. The other side I'm back down to the boot area. I've left the boot area because as in the title of the video is going to be about turning my classic BMW into electric. Now the introduction to this will be the drivetrain I'm planning on using is a Nissan Leaf motor as it probably says in the description so I have the Nissan Leaf motor now I've got a complete unit I didn't just get the motor because I wasn't really sure what 100% I was doing yet obviously if you take a motor if you're following the EV world if you just take the motor out of a car you can't just put it in and use it you need some kind of third party controller to operate the electric motor with all the fundamental controls of the, of the throttle yeah I wanted to go with an AC unit I didn't fancy doing a DC I know there's a lot of people that are doing DC conversion and if you follow, follow um, Damien Maguire on his builds which is quite impressive what he does with all his he's a genius when it comes to the EV world I can't afford a Tesla drive unit that would be great to put a Tesla drive unit in the car but um, but I've gone for the Leaf, it's more affordable and there are third party home brew controllers coming onto the market now which can control the motor. plan is eventually to have the strip the internal combustion engine out and go with the Nissan Leaf unit. So that's the basic introduction to this video. So what we'll do, I'll pass you over to my mate here, Stavros, who's just going to quickly run through it and tell us what we're going to do next, and we'll see how we get on. Stavros, how are you getting on over there, mate? All right. The camera's behind you. All right, okay. Ah. Oh. Hey, Jubies. So, um, this is our engine. I don't know if you can see it from there. Let's get you a bit lower. Let's pull you in a bit. How's that look? Right, so this is our engine. It's a Nissan Leaf 2015, I believe, engine. It's, um, it's an EM57. Drivetrain. This is a complete unit. So, what we're going to do is, what we want to do to start with is start removing all the control wiring off at the moment remove all this excess wiring and these bits that we don't need that are not going to be used so it is a liquid cooled unit which it probably might well be when we're time we finish with it as well we'll probably hook up some kind of liquid cooling on it just the tubes link up the motor inverter take it up to a little radiator or something at the front Yep, yeah, good idea. We will we'll get it on the axles. We'll get it on the engine hoist in a minute. Yeah, no sugar in mine, thanks. Let's get it up in the air first of all, and we'll get all the wiring off and see where we stand from there. So yeah, if you could just give us a hand with the hoist, yeah, we'll sort of get it on the hoist. So we're back in a minute with it on the hoist. Start stripping out the wiring on this. I've got it up on the on the engine hoist now. If you can see it there. Just went ahead and bought one. I know it's a bit of a luxury, but if, you, if you're doing anything like this, you need an engine hoist, I think. It wasn't expensive. To be honest with you, I think I paid like just over £100 for it delivered. I don't know how they did it for that money. It's so heavy, the bloody thing. And it wasn't worth getting a second hour one because you'd have to go and collect it anyway. And need a van or whatever, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, quick story. This is how I got back onto my restoration project. I was all on verge of chopping it up and breaking it up for spares, this car. So people that were hateful about this, I've actually bringing this car back to life because I was just about to, I could have, I was on the verge of scrapping it because I haven't done anything on it for years, I just left it half done. 
So this has revived the restoration process on this car so hopefully it will hook the streets again at some point even though it won't be under its own internal combustion engine it will be uh, more green friendly and to be honest with you with older cars for the little use it will get maybe I don't want to be faffing around with engines not starting and stuff I just like to just get in it and use it I don't want to be messing around with old oily engines to be honest so back to our project so I'm gonna go ahead now like I said we're gonna go ahead and start uh, here's a bit of a mess stripping out all the orange wiring off this top bits the charger DC to DC converter that we won't be using but hopefully hopefully someone will create a hack that will be able to utilize that because to buy those parts extra standalone are quite expensive so hopefully someone will create a board that will run that to charge the battery eventually the middle sandwich part is the inverter we will be keeping that and obviously the bottom half the bottom third part is the electric motor with gearbox that I'm hoping to utilize it looks like this would have gone on the original battery of the car so that goes straight into the charger see they put a little green line there must do you know whether the bolts are coming loose or not let's find a spanner that fits that Stavros do you want a cup of tea yeah thanks mate let's get bolt one off so this is the battery plus okay so that's off I'm gonna put the nuts back on because because whoa well right, let's get this baby back on I didn't realize but he's actually this is a good idea what he did at the breakers yard he literally forklifted it into my car I didn't video that getting it out I should have done really but I've gone equipped with chains and everything but this is what they basically utilize is safety belt straps they just tie them on he says one of the strongest things you can use for hoisting stuff up and down he says they hoist up big lorry engines with a single strap so obviously I won't be dismantling any mechanical parts because that's literally just tied around the, the cooling hose pipe there hopefully that won't snap off not that and on the other end that's the reason why I wanted to buy it you can get complete engines with that's all been removed all the wiring section you may need certain plugs off the off the original engine like I will need this plug I was hoping when I got the my controller that that was still attached to it that is the plug that plugs into the inverter so my controller my third part third party controller needs to hook up into that so if you haven't got that plug obviously it's going to be a problem because you need that plug to what up into it I did see one on eBay that was running for £5,000. That would be a bit sacrilege to take a perfectly working car apart just to get the engine and motor out. Well, that's the bolt for that. Let's put that bolt back in. Doing this all one handed, I need to set the camera up so I can use both hands ideally. How's that looking? I'm going to go ahead and remove the Okay, that's one bit of wiring out Need that, I won't need this just supports this I think let's get this out let's get 
that bracket out. Let's put these bolts back in. So this orange, anything orange is high voltage. If you're doing EV stuff, you probably already know that. So, so this was the charging plug for. This was on the front of the car, obviously, on the, on the Nissans. I might go ahead and take these other bits off. I don't need these, I don't think. I'm going to go ahead and just take these off. Any I can strip off. Okay, that's that one gone. This must be the gear selector. Gear selector, selector, selector. Switch. This is a switch that goes into the gearbox. This must go into the ECU. Plugs into the main wiring harness. So that's all stripped off there. We'll come round to that in a minute. We have the other rest of the HV cable. This is a breather hose. This small flexible hose. It just goes to a cap there. I don't know if that's used for filling. Will the oil come out if I take that out? I suppose I should just remove this for now, shouldn't I? I don't really need this at the moment. It will have to go back at some point, I would have thought. And it'll have to come off anyway because it's attached to this bracket. So we'll get that off anyway. Let's get this off. This is obviously something to do with the gearbox. Push that, just push and release. Okay, that's the next piece off. Slowly stripping away. I'm curious to look in there. Let's get this off. Right, let's get this one off. I want to look inside there. Let's have a look inside there. It's probably 8mm now. That's good. Right. I think, I don't know if we can see that. There's another plug in there. Two, four, six, eight. Right, there's eight wires in there. I can't afford the damage, so I don't think. Let's put that back. I think that is the resolver for the motor. I'm not very technical with stuff like this, but what I can read between the lines, what I've seen on YouTube, that's quite crucial that. That tells the inverter, that tells the inverter what position the motor's at, the spindle orientation. I think this part is gonna be quite a crucial part. That's why you, if you're gonna do these, you need to try and get it of the, its own wiring harness. I'm hoping that this bit will go round and just up to the inverter and I can remove, I can lose this mass afterwards. Just carry on removing the loom. It's back to a 10mm I think there. This will probably have to go back on afterwards, this piece of wiring. Okay, next up, this bit will definitely have to go because it links onto the, you can see it, this bit goes onto the charger which will be going anyway. Some kind of metal shield here, I'm sure maybe there's a plug behind it or something. It's just used for cable time obviously, maybe let's put these back. Luckily it's come complete with all the engine mounts and everything. So we're here to our inver uh, inverter plug now, I think, this bit. You can see that in the camera, there's a round plug here. I'm going to go in and unplug this. This goes into the charger. It, there's a little half twist and then it pulls down, I think. Massive plug on that. So we can remove that. That's just one piece. That's the same wiring harness, that piece. Let's go ahead. This 
is the inverter plug. So that's a cover for the inverter. It's the wiring harness for the inverter. So does this just pull out? I'm quite sure how this works. Okay, so that just the great part pulls up like a hinge. And it pulls out. There's a little extra plug on the top there. But there's no actual wiring on it, maybe it's just for future. So this is our plug. It's broken there, or was that just the shape of it? So this literally just plugs in there. And it just clips back down into it. Okay, so that's that out. I need to look after this. This will be my wiring harness. That's probably the part number for the loom, this bit. If you can see that there. If you get one without the... Um, hasn't got the wiring loom. This is a 2015 EM57 engine, I think. If you can see that there. So that's probably one part that is. Oh, here's the tag from the breakers yard. So this is a 2015. This came from the Nissan electric van, the NV to ENV 200, which is the Nissan Leaf engine in it, I think. It's just the van version of the, but the drivetrain's the same. I'm gonna undo this tape wiring where the, I'm going to undo this wiring where the um, resolver plug is. I want to see which way the wiring goes. Looks like it all goes back to the inverter end, but I'm just curious to see if we can get this off. It's all covered in coolant where it's been removed from the car. So that's quite good then. So just the resolver plug wiring goes straight up this loom to the inverter plug, which is good to know. That's some there, there's four wires, four lots of two pair, two core cabling. It's eight cores in total. And that all goes up to this plug and maybe the charger as well. Anyway, that's quite good to know. The whole thing's a whole learning curve to me as well because this is all new to me. There's no how-to book on to do this stuff. You've just got to like, just go on the net and just keep looking and looking and looking. Yes, can I help you?